Uh, I'm Poonam Batra and I have just retired from the University of Delhi. I was working there at the Department of Education. Uh, my basic background is from psychology. I trained in clinical psychology and moved to education. Uh, I've been working at the university largely in the area of public policy, teacher education, curriculum, gender, pedagogy, with a focus on elementary education. Bachelors of Elementary Education was an idea that uh, came to us uh, when I joined the Maulana Azad Center for Elementary and Social Education at the Department of Education in Delhi University. And the Department of Education of Delhi University is really the Central Institute of Education, which is a premier institute uh, as old as the country, started in 1948. So during the seventh plan, five-year plan, uh, they had proposed, uh, along with many um, educationists like Dr. Anil Lakshmi, uh, Dr. Anil Satkopal, Professor Krishna Kumar, they all get, got together and uh, decided that they need to look at elementary education as a focus uh, for a particular scheme that the government was floating, the centrally sponsored scheme for teacher education. So at that time, the idea was that we should do something in the department on primary and upper primary education. And they started the center called the Maulana Zat Center for Elementary and Social Education. Particularly social was critical because that was the vision of Maulana Zad, the first education minister, considering that uh, the training of teachers should be sort of linked, um, you know, intimately to social issues and society at large. CIE had only a B.Ed. program, which was really training teachers for classes six onwards. So like Professor Panchapakeshan said, that for CIE children are born at the age of 11. <laughs> so that's when we thought of uh, getting into um, writing a perspective paper for the Maulana Azad Center. And one of the mandates was to create a professional program for elementary level school teachers. Uh, so the Bachelor of Elementary Education was really a vision that emerged from a lot of exchange of ideas. Uh, at that time, Professor Upendra Bakshi was the Vice Chancellor of Delhi University. And uh, he said, how do you know that uh, there is even a market for a program like this? So will there be takers? So you do a feasibility study and show it to us. And we actually did a feasibility study. Uh, for about three to four months, we were engaged, talked to school teachers, talked to school principals, talked to um, even faculty in DU, and we got a very positive response. Then the question was whether uh, we should do a three-year or a four-year, because the idea was to do a long duration. Uh, undergraduate colleges was the model we had in mind, that we should locate teacher education in an undergraduate college that offers interdisciplinarity and exchange with many other different disciplines apart from just looking at, uh, you know, classroom and pedagogy, because education is a meta-discipline. And that led us, the feasibility study actually quite clearly posed this in front of us and um, the, it became clear that it should be a four-year program that was quite challenging because the undergrad programs were all three-year BA honors or a BA pass program. But we had talked to many of the uh, college principals and they all were ready to start a program of four years and the idea of teacher education was something that appealed to them. Uh, we were really a very large community of, we involved university level teachers, we involved college teachers, we involved school teachers and NGOs, the NGOs working in the area of education. And there were over a hundred academics and practitioners that came together over a period of a year and we created the four year program. And in 1993, we were ready with the first year program but the university was clear that we should have the full four years ready, which is what we did in 94. And then we started in September 1994, which is much later than the beginning of the academic session. But it was a, it was a very unusual experience. Whoever we tapped 
uh, they were excited about the idea. It was like as if, you know, they're looking for good education for their own children. Vision of the program really emerged from a um, lot of these interactions we had with various people. And I think people within CIE, especially, um, you know, Krishna Kumar, Professor Nargis, Panchapakeshan, they were all, they'd already sort of thought through some of the ideas of how we need to address younger children's education. And uh, so the structure within which we uh, envisioned the four-year program was one that would integrate professional education with general education. So we were clear that we do need to um, equip the student teacher with a good um, academic sort of um, robust knowledge in at least one of the disciplines that they would then carry their higher education through and then perhaps take that as a discipline for their school teaching. But uh, this was to be done with academic rigor as much as any other BA honors or a pass program does. The professional aspect of the education was structured in such a way that we enable the student teachers to revisit the school knowledge that they have studied at class 10, 11, 12, because there they studied with the purpose of literally memorizing by rote, passing examination. But here we wanted them to get to the, to the epistemological underpinnings of let's say mathematics itself or language or social science. So these are called the core courses which they do in the first year. So it's a revisiting. So they literally sort of understand and that becomes a precursor to any pedagogic development, pedagogic understanding. The other thing that we were clear about is that we should give them an exposure to um, the content of some of these very basic school knowledges so that they can then you know become a springboard to sort of understand that at a more advanced level. Uh, also because they were doing courses on psychology let's say child development or cognition and learning uh, they would be uh, in a position not to understand the basic frames of psychological theory so it was quite a tricky task but we did manage to structure the course in such a way that they had a basic foundational understanding of, uh, let's say, schools of psychology and then locate how child development theories are looked at. But we were also very clear that as they study theories of child development, they cannot just confine themselves to looking at the child as a textbook child. The idea was that in a diverse country like India, they have to know the real child. And therefore, there was 60% and more of practicum that was woven into the program. So there's practicum courses that are separate from theory, but the theory itself is designed in such a way that every single theoretical course has one unit of study that is field-based. So if you want to study even about reservation policy, you just don't study documents and policy. You actually go and interview people and try and understand how the reservation policy has unfolded for them. So these are the kind of things we try to weave in into the program. So in the first year, we also thought it would be a good idea for them to, uh, to get into a sort of journey of their own selves. Because I think it's very important for a teacher to feel secure as a person to have her own vision of education before she becomes an educator. So the idea was to, for the young student teacher who comes out of plus two, because this is a program that comes in after plus two, that the student teacher is able to become in touch with herself, understand her own strengths, understand her own weaknesses and limitations, and work through that. Now, what was the kind of space that will allow them to do that? We thought of theater. So we have a very major component of theatre in the first year. Alongside we have craft, we have music. So all those kind of different ways of knowing. So you know one doesn't really prepare teachers only cerebrally, but to actually prepare them as holistic people who can also learn to sort of accept when they have biases and prejudices and how do they confront those as they are teaching diverse children. Likewise, we sort of move from a very light touch 
interaction with the children in the first year through a school contact program where they don't have to teach but they just do origami or theater or music with children get to know these children at a very personal level and then move slowly towards the second year where they do very interesting semi-structured sort of practicum with children for example um, a, a day in the life of a child a child from the neighborhood a child from a basti or a child from a very affluent home, how those backgrounds actually change the very meaning of childhood and what kind of children they are when they come from these diverse backgrounds. So, and they go into other sort of structured assignments like, uh, you know, looking at the moral dilemma that Piaget talks about, Kohlberg's idea, and then looking at it more sort of critically. So there's theory and practice back and forth movement. That's how we designed the program. And that was really the structural change. The other very major departure was that the program, apart from theater, which allows them that self journey space, there is a self development practicum, which is in the second year. And it goes alongside human relations and communication as a theory course, which is more like a debrief of different uh, theoretical ideas on identity, identity development, bringing in the interface between the individual and the social. And then they sit through self development workshops with a facilitator, could be a psychologist could be a transaction analyst, it could be anybody. And these are people who you don't get from within the university. So the idea was we push the system to bring in those elements that come from outside the university, like even theater. It, you know, you bring in people from outside. So there's a whole lot of ways of knowing and what to know, which informs a teacher, which cannot happen within the university setting. So this is where structurally we were able to bring in a lot. Uh, slowly then from there on in the third year, they move also deeper into a liberal option course. So if they choose to study maths or they choose to study history or geography or political science, they do a rigorous course second and third year. And then we move into issues of basic concepts in education, educational thinkers. So thinkers within our own context, whether it's Tagore or Gandhi or even Krishnamurti. And then we go into Montessori as well, or even go into a little bit transcontinental, look at Dewey, for example, or look at uh, Pestolzi, try and understand Rousseau. I mean, to get a feel of what is the philosophies behind education thinking and educational vision. And then they also sort of start developing their own vision, looking at the context they are in. So the context is always center stage. And we're not just doing theory or philosophy, which is completely, you know, de uh, severed from, from the day-to-day -day reality. Then in the fourth year, they study curriculum studies in a more sort of concerted manner. They do pedagogy courses beginning with second year where they're all trained at the primary level. So language, maths, EVS, all three. But the upper primary level, they can choose. So they do pedagogy of social science or they do pedagogy of science or language or mathematics. So they do one of those and that's in the fourth year. But the idea being that pedagogically they should be trained at the primary level since we want one teacher to teach all subjects. But also the idea is that they get to understand not pedagogy or method of teaching history, but the pedagogy of social science. Because social science has its own epistemological frames. It has its own methods of inquiry, which are very different from sciences. So they have to get into epistemic questions. And that helps them to actually even question or examine closely the content of the subjects. So it's not as if history is given to me and I teach it. But I also question the history that's given to me to teach so that I can discern between history and myth. So in that sense, they get uh, a very good, robust uh, uh, sort of uh, frames within which they look at subject content and derive pedagogy out of disciplinary content rather than out of completely isolated deductive method of teaching, question answer method of teaching, which is the colonial frame of the beard. So they move very far away from that and they look at it more contextually. And there's a very long duration school internship in the fourth year, 
where they get a chance first to observe the classes where a regular teacher is teaching. And we were very clear until today, after 30 years also, we are maintaining that, where they actually go to government schools. Because the idea of the BLH started with the idea that we want to rejuvenate the government school system. So they still do their internships there, they observe, they understand the whole system, and that's when they are more prepared to actually work within the constraints of a government school system. Because we know that there are so many constraints in that kind of a space. So it's a program that really um, gives a lot of dialectic experience between theory practice and it is also a program that structures the, the knowledge engagement alongside methods and approaches of teaching. So it isn't a dividing line between subject content and pedagogy, but the two actually are woven together. There were several challenges. Uh, we actually faced opposition within the department because a lot of people felt that uh, we should only do a one-year program and not a long duration. And there were several other challenges uh, which I cannot all talk about. But these challenges were really not academic. They were more political in nature. So the story is that in the academic council itself, which went on all night <laughs> until five in the morning, Ultimately, it was Professor Upendra Bakshi as Vice-Chancellor who approved the program in his own discretionary capacity uh, because there was too much political opposition. Uh, but I think Professor Bakshi, I mean, one owes a lot to him because he saw the vision and he understood that there is something here that needs to be supported. Uh, we did have challenges even in terms of teaching because we located this program in undergraduate colleges with a very clear vision. The vision was that when young people after school come to be prepared to be, become teachers, they must have an interdisciplinary environment and a kind of corporate life of the college which a department cannot offer and their peers uh, would be able to you know, give them a lot of opportunities in terms of exchange of ideas and so on. And I think that model has worked excellently. We found that uh, there were a lot of takers. I mean, even colleges, top-notch colleges of the University of Delhi like St. Stephen's were very interested, but somehow that didn't happen. The expansion of the program became quite difficult because we didn't get the kind of support we got from Professor Upendra Bakshi from the other vice chancellors. There were lots and lots of um, reservations because even the government of India perhaps and the Ministry of Education had those reservations of investment in long duration programs. Although we did give them three different models, you know, to show to them that the undergraduate model is actually financially much more viable because there's already an infrastructure available. If you create a new institute, it takes you much more of, you know, the kind of funds that you need. Even then, there was a lot of resistance with the result that we did expand from 1994 till about 2003. We have now eight colleges. There was a ninth college also, which was in the Trans Yamuna area. Unfortunately, due to some political issues, that got closed down. Uh, we have eight colleges, but we weren't able to expand. The, the uh, pro real problem was that we couldn't expand into co-education colleges. Although many of them offered, there are 10 applications I discover as I look at my archives that I have. Uh, that are still pending, but the university did not sort of go ahead. There was resistance to expansion. So that was one very major challenge. And if it had been allowed to expand, I think we would have probably been one of the more exemplar programs that would have created a, a model that would have been tested and tried at a larger scale. Uh, though even now we can say, about 70% uh, of BL Ed graduates over the past 30 years, we've done a little research recently, tell us that they go into the school system. They actually go as school teachers. Um, while some of them do go to government schools, uh, many of them also go to private schools. 30% of them go into higher education. So what we have now is very interesting. 
a BLET faculty within a college where literally 30 to 40 percent faculty is the BLET themselves. So it's full circle. They've been able to take on an MED let's say after the BLED they do an MA in a particular parent discipline. It could be um, it could be history, it could be sociology, it could be even psychology. In fact, this is one of the programs that allows you to uh, take in very diverse courses at the M MA level, uh, except we've had a challenge for admission into the MSc program because the sciences, uh, they're very keen that there, are, there is more coursework done than what the BLA do. We did do a review also of the program in 2018. We were ready with uh, more inputs in a change of the curriculum and we included many more hours of engagement in the liberal option, including the sciences. But then due to the political change of government, we were not able to take that forward. Uh, and therefore that is still lying, um, waiting for, for a better time. Uh, but I must also tell you here that we've done three reviews of the program since it started. One review was done in 1996, which is when the program was just two years old. So our batch was not even yet qualified. But the idea was to feed back and let us know where we are going wrong, where we are going fine. So there was a very close monitoring of the teaching of the program. For example, we had the challenge of all our courses, theory courses, are interdisciplinary. So we have a course on contemporary India. It has elements of economics, it has concepts of political science, it has concepts of history, geography. So, and every teacher that we approached, they said, look, I can do this unit because history is my subject. I can't manage that. So we tried to create a team teaching and that worked very well. Now there are BLEDs who've gone through this and they're able to teach contemporary India because they've got trained in an interdisciplinarity frame. That's the other very major strength of the program. The other big challenge we have faced, and I must tell you that it's only now that we have won this battle, which is to uh, enable our graduates to become TGT, that is trained graduate teachers in the school system. They were just not accepted, despite the fact that this is a program which has a bachelor's orientation, the university has passed it through its equivalence committee, and many other states have accepted it, but the Delhi government had a lot of difficulties, and they would oppose anybody from the BLA to come into TGT. But a double bench uh, verdict from the High Court was able to actually give the BLED the legitimacy of a degree which is really eligible for a TGT, both for direct recruitment and for general promotion, as they say, after a certain period of service. So this has been a very major battle won. And just before I came to Bangalore, I came to know that the Delhi government has changed its recruitment rules and they've included the BLED degree in its uh, RRs.